Hi, everybody. It's Electra Yao, immigration artist, visa lawyer, and entertainment lawyer. I'm very sorry that I'm late today. Um, I had a couple of meetings before our live, so um, I had to push this back, but I'm sorry I'm late. Um, happy Monday. I hope you guys are very excited to start off the week. I am very excited to talk to you guys about how you can protect your artwork and your artistry. Um, I think that this is a topic that is often ignored, um, not by attorneys, but by artists, because um, it's kind of a, a tough thing to bring up when you're um, either selling your work or putting on a production or somebody's asking for your help. It's kind of difficult for you guys to um, talk about the nitty gritty of the protection of your work. So I'm going to force you guys to think about it. And we're going to talk about contracts all week. Um, so today I'm going to talk about two, no, three contracts that you guys should know about so that you can protect your work. So the first contract that you guys should um, be aware of is your sales contract. So for all of my designers out there, for all of my illustrators out there, for all of my photographers, for all of my painters, for whatever type of artwork you are selling, you absolutely need to have the first contract we're gonna talk about, which is a sales agreement. You need to have a contract for um, the purchase of your artwork. That means that you need to um, outline how much your artwork is worth, um, identify what the consideration is, so what the value that's going to be exchanged is between you and the, the seller, um, or sorry, the buyer, the person who's buying your work. Um, and you need to understand what the terms of that sale is. Um, so for example, are you going to be responsible for the delivery of your artwork to that person or that entity's house or organization? Um, are they going to come pick it up from your studio? These are things that if they are not, um, memorialized and identified in a contract can lead, um, to, um, an unpleasant relationship. And remember, you want to just sell your artwork. You want to just disseminate your ideas and your creations out into the public. So you want to make sure that you have that sales contract to outline those nitty gritty details so that you don't create unprofessional or unpleasant relationships. And so that in the event of a dispute, right, which we hope doesn't happen, but in the event of a dispute, you have a memorialized agreement that basically outlined your rights, the seller's rights, the buyer's rights, so that you know where you stand if you ever need to go into litigation. But if you have an attorney working on your contracts, um, responsible, experienced attorneys know exactly what to include in a contract to, you know, try to avoid litigation. So the second type of contract that is very important is for my performers out there. So I don't care what the scale of the production is. I don't care if it's a large scale production or if it's a small production that you are just putting up, um, you know, in a pop up shop, you know, in the middle of the street or whatever. You need to make sure that you have a performer agreement and your performer agreement needs to outline very important things to protect you so that you are not overworked. So, for example, um, when are you going to be taking your breaks? How how long is your break? When are you expected to get off book? These are things that should be included in your performer contract. Now, again, the, the goal of these different types of agreements is to, number one, protect you, and number two, to have the expectations of your responsibilities and the production's responsibilities out in the open so that both, of, both parties can actually concentrate on what their goal is to merge together and bring to fruition this production. And if you are getting stuck on nitty gritty details, such as when are you supposed to take your break? How long is your break? When are you guys going to start the blocking? This will create um, distance between you and actually putting the production together. So you really want to make sure that whatever the scale of the production is, that you have a performer agreement in place to protect you. The third agreement that I want to talk about is a little bit more... Um, all encompassing, maybe a little bit more generic. This is a consulting agreement. So a lot of the times, and I've seen this in my practice, um, artists are allowed are asked to, you know, just help out for a bit, or maybe to, you know, pass by and give some advice. And it's number one, wonderful that you're called upon by your peers to um, put forward your thoughts so that they can utilize your input to improve their production. Um, and Number two, it's great that you've gotten to that level in your career where people are actually valuing your professional advice. In a situation like that, I always advise to utilize a consulting agreement. 
And again, I'm going to repeat this. I don't care what the scale of the project is or the production is. I don't care if really it's you just going over to a colleague's studio and commenting and discussing the type of color that's being used. You want to make sure that you have some sort of agreement in place so that number one, expectations of both parties are met. Um, I've seen lots of relationships um, die um, and unfold negatively um, because there were certain expectations um, that somebody had that weren't met by the other person. And remember, I'm trying to give you information on the business of the arts. So the business of the arts is often overlooked because sometimes artists and creative people really don't want to bring forth these instruments that would protect them and their artwork. Um, so again, I guess the recurring theme for today is it doesn't matter what the scale of the project is. Your work is your work, whether you're working on a Broadway production or whether you're working for MTV. You want to make sure that your artistry, your artwork, your creativity is protect protected. So this is why in every creative person's repertoire, you need to understand that you need, um, number one, a sales agreement, number two, a performer agreement, and number three, a consulting agreement. So that expectations between you and the other party are met and you can do your job um, with all the safety precautions in place. Um, so this week, we're going to continue to talk about contracts. We're going to flesh this idea out. I'm going to give you um, examples um, of what a contract looks like. Um, and hopefully, we can continue this discussion positively. If you have additional questions about certain contracts that maybe I mentioned that you don't know about, feel free to send me um, an email or a message. But the theme of today is it doesn't matter what the scale of the production is. What matters is the protection of your work. Um, I will see you later today at four o'clock where I will continue to give you um, tips to revive and, dis and um, expand upon your creative careers. Um, look forward to talking to you guys later today and sorry for being late.